Uh, today we're going to look at one of the four parts of the SAT. As you know, the SAT is broken up into the essay section, which is the first thing you see when you sit down to take the test. Uh, then you have uh, other sections called sentence completions, which are really vocabulary fill-in-the-blank questions. Uh, then that's followed by reading comprehension. And then you have questions dealing with grammatical concepts. So today we're going to take kind of the easiest one first, although it's uh, reading, the, the sentence completions can be deceptively uh, difficult, deceptively simple rather, because they look simple, but uh, they involve other issues which we'll get to. I want to put up on the board here for you to see the, we're going to give methods uh, in each of these sections so that you can feel in control of the test. What my goal for you is, is for you to be able to sit down the day of the test and to feel as if you have a strategy the way you have a strategy going into a game. You have a game plan. Uh, the worst thing that can happen on the SAT is for you to sit down and feel as if the test is controlling you. I want you to control the test. Okay? All right, so the first thing we're going to look at today is the strategy for uh, doing the sentence completions correctly uh, and effectively and feeling as if you're in control of it. And we're going to look also at some of the things that, that uh, are involved with vocabulary in general. So first we'll get to the simple part, then we'll get to the complicated part. All right. The first thing I want you to do when you sit down to take a sentence completion question and this may sound uh, counter to what logic says, but I want you to cover the choices. Right? You're going to cover it with your hand. I don't know if the proctor will perhaps allow you to use some blocker like an index card or something, but if, if worse comes to worse, you cover the choices with your hand. The next thing is I want you really very carefully to read the sentence. Now the reason we cover the choices and then really closely read the sentence is that people who have researched reading will tell you that when someone is reading a page, the eyes will gather words in a clump. They'll shoot across and stop, shoot across and stop. It almost looks like, a, like someone you know, running and stopping, running and stopping. And the eye gathers up information in chunks. The problem with these questions is <laughs> the eye of the students tends to move across and then down. So for example, I'll read this the wrong way. I'll pretend I'm reading this in uh, a way that shows the problem I'm indicating. The sentence says, the stranger was actually smaller than I had thought. His stature was blank by the alarm he caused as he loomed up suddenly in the dark alley. Now, underneath that there are five choices, A through E. This is what people do unconsciously when they're not aware of what their eyes are doing because they haven't covered the choices. I'm going to read it again and I'm going to read out loud what my eyes are doing. The stranger was actually, boy, I never saw the word disparaged before. What is admonished? I heard that word last year in Mrs. Wilkinson's class. Smaller than I had, oh, I know worse than that's easy. Disfigured, what does that mean? In other words, the person is not reading the sentence. And they're not even doing it consciously. Their eye is going like this and then down. This and then down. So they're getting distracted by the choices. All right. This method indicates that Knowing the choices ahead of time is not even important. What's really important is that you know what the sentence is saying. Okay, so cover your choices so they don't distract you. Really carefully read the sentence. When you're reading the sentence, use what's called the context. In other words, does the sentence have a before and after structure? Does it say something like, Michael studied very hard, so the next day he did blank on his test. Is it before and after? Is it cause and effect? If you drink poison, you will, you know, does it have that kind of structure, okay? So use the context clues in the sentence to come up with a word, and this is very, very important. I want the word to come from your own mind. Uh, most of the time we're talking to people, we, our mind will supply us with the right word, or our mind will supply us with the right idea, although sometimes we can't put it into the right word, we're going to use our mind, we're going to trust our mind to come up with the right idea for that blank, and then, only then, are we going to look for that word, our word, among the choices given. You'll find out that, that 8 out of 10 times, or maybe even more, the word that you come up with 
will have a synonym in the choices or there'll, there'll be a word in the choices that is very much like the word you've come up with. Now, don't think that because I said a word that you have to come up with the perfect dictionary word, okay? That's often impossible even for highly educated people. What, if you can come up with a word, that's perfect. If you can't come up with the exactly perfect word, at least using the context, come up with an idea. Like you say something like, well, I don't know what the word is, but it means kind of a face that looks sad. That's perfectly good. Because then if you see the word frown down below, you'll say, oh, that, yes, that's the word I meant. All right? So don't think that you've got to come up with the perfect word. Just come up with a feeling, like I think it's negative, or I think the second choice is positive because it's going from negative to positive. All right. And then we said look for that word or that feeling or that synonym in the choices given. Okay. One thing to watch out for when you're doing these is also a little thing that you'll notice if you do enough of these questions is that on the SAT, wrong answers on this section are usually found doubled. Okay, it's an indication that the answer that you're picking must be wrong. If, for example, um, the proper word is uh, magnified and you see something like choice C is disparaged, which means insulted, and then choice D says mocked, okay, or insulted, all right, you know that those two can't be the answer because, of course, two equally correct answers must be both wrong, okay? So look for what I call the double mistake. They're, they double up on the wrong answer, all right? Okay, now we're going to try uh, one of these that you'll see in your book on page 111. So we're going to go to the practice number one, and we're just going to try a few of these, and then we're going to switch and talk about these concepts for a minute, all right? Because you're going to notice something in doing these that we have to bring up. Here's the first example. The stranger was actually smaller than I had thought. Now, I'm covering my choices with my hand. I'm doing it myself. Uh, his stature was blank by the alarm he caused as he loomed up suddenly in the dark alley. Okay, now I'm going to use my own method. I've covered my choices. I've read the sentence carefully. And now I'm going to try to use context clues to come up with a word from my own line. Again, I'm covering my choices so I don't distract myself. The stranger was actually smaller than I thought. Therefore, his stature must have been made something by the alarm he caused as he loomed up. Loomed up means to rise up out of the dark. So if he was actually smaller than I had thought, this means the person made a mistake and the guy must be larger. So his stature, which means his size, must have been made larger. That's how I'm thinking, okay? I'm using my own mind to come up with my own word, all right? So what would a word be that would be made larger? Increased, all right, exaggerated, something like that. And now when I think I've got the right idea, I look at my choices. A is worsened. Worsened has nothing to do with making somebody look larger, right? So we can cross that out. Now when you get choices that you know are not good, just cross them out, eliminate them. Okay, don't, don't sweat over them, cross them out. And now we look at the second one, magnified. Magnified works very well because of course it means the guy looked larger than he actually was. He was magnified by the light in the alley, okay? Don't, don't make the mistake of picking the first good word that you see, all right? You may see a really good word, but then you see a second one that's even better. So be careful, read all the choices. C is disparaged, which means